Mosman who has sung us, Mosman who rectors, vice chancellors, principals, IB members, ladies and gentlemen. This is our third international conference <coughs> for the last 10 years. So we are celebrating the <coughs> 10th anniversary of the Association of the National Association of <coughs> Buddhist Universities as well. As you know, <coughs> the aim of the IBU is to network and collaborate in the study and practice of Buddhism and to promote internationally using the uh, higher education as an instrument. We bring together in the IPU diverse institutions from diverse Buddhist traditions. Now <coughs> we have uh, 79 member institutions. When I say member institution, because we only accept members, uh, institution as members, not individual scholars. And those 79 institutions, they come from 20 countries. The <coughs> this third IB International Conference um, has taken place over three days. The first day was dedicated to the administrative matters. For that, we divided ourselves into five groups to brainstorm, to find frameworks for our future collaboration. Those five groups, namely the first one, the curriculum development, the second one, meditation practices in the curriculum, number three, the IB members and their role, number five, the quality assurance and quality control, the last, number five, the MOU, memorandum of understanding that have been signed between members. <coughs> The first group, the curriculum development, was led by Ambassador Yanosh Yelin, rector of Dharma Kate Buddhist College from Hungary. The panel has found <coughs> very and rich practices of curriculum development in various countries. We are going to use this to our strength. We have found that those differences, you know, they come from different needs in different countries. So, <coughs> um, this is just the beginning of brainstorming and the process of formulating our framework and policy. As far as the second panel <coughs> is concerned, which is meditation practices in the curriculum, Many of our members already have meditation as an optional, uh, sorry, as a compulsory component of the um, curriculum. Even many secular universities have taken up this. Maybe not in the, um, the way we understand meditation, but <coughs> in the form of what they call Secular, med secular mindfulness meditation. In, 19, sorry, in uh, 2015, the American Journal of uh, the American the Journal of American Medical Association reports that 80% of the medical school in America have mindfulness uh, study and mindfulness-based research. So, <coughs> uh, meditation practices are part of not just 
Buddhist universities uh, syllabuses, but also the secular one. You can see the popularity of this in the keynote speeches, one <coughs> on the sixth uh, from Hungary, and the last one we have just heard uh, before I <coughs> stand <coughs> here in front of you. So the question is how to quantify and measure the progress in academic terms when it comes to meditation as uh, an academic discipline. Of course, we have various uh, opinions as well as you know, practices reported in the, um, <coughs> in the panel, which is led by the most venerable Professor Jim Lee from Dunkel University and venerable associate Professor Turahansa Tamahasa from MCU. The, <coughs> the third uh, panel was on the IPU members and their responsibilities and role. And I led the panel myself with <coughs> uh, the co moderator from Cambodia. The Venerable Professor Pratama Kosa Chan, Acting Director of uh, Sienu Raja Buddhist University. We agree that members should be active, should be more active in communication with the IB Secretariat. Sometimes we don't know if there are changes in personnel, especially in administration in our member university. So <coughs> that needs to be um, a more active interaction between members and the IAP secretariat. We also talk about members um, getting more, uh, playing more active role in developing the IBU. That is um, academically to brainstorm how to um, take forward what we already have, and also financially. It was agreed that um, in the future conferences, those who are able to pay uh, should pay for their own expenses so that we don't burden, for example, you know, our host. Uh, for the last three conferences, my July has been the only host of the IP conferences. The fourth panel, the fourth panel is um, the quality assurance and quality control led by the vice rector for academic affairs of MCU, the most venerable professor. Dr. Prapriyatikawi, Raj Priyatikawi, and also Senior Professor P. D. Premansiri, the Emeritus Professor of Piratina University in Sri Lanka. Here again, we found the diverse and very uh, approaches in uh, assuring quality in teaching and research among our member um, colleges and universities. As I have mentioned earlier, we shall look for, <coughs> we shall find a way uh, to use our diver diversity um, as a strength. And one day, you know, we have to come up with agreeable uh, framework and use that as a standard. The last <coughs> uh, panel that we have is on the MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, that have been signed between member uh, institutions. Altogether, 16 M uh, uh, MOU have been signed in the last 10 years. And um, they provide some sort of mechanism in, <coughs> in 
initiating collaboration and, and strengthening them. So basically, there's the, uh, the, 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 <coughs> the business of the first day on the 6th. On the second day yesterday, we dedicated ourselves the whole day to the discussion of mindfulness and compassionate application. And <coughs> Once again, um, yesterday we divided ourselves into three groups, the text, the living meditation tradition, and the contemporary application. Um, <coughs> as far as the texts are concerned, you know, we have uh, experts of scriptures, Buddhist scriptures from all the three traditions, Theravada, Mahatma, and Vajrayana, exploring mindfulness meditation practices in the form of um, samatha and vipassana and, and, and brahma vihara and more. We have agreed that um, the mindfulness practices and, and tradition that we have in all the, the schools in essence, you know, <coughs> they are the same, but in terms of application, uh, they may be, shall I say, creatively uh, very. <coughs> the second group is on the living meditation tradition. Some well known meditation masters came and presented their practices and answered questions from the floor. They included the tradition from the Pautoya meditation, that is Pao Forest meditation tradition from Myanmar, uh, as and going at East tradition, you know, from India, and many Zen practices um, from mm, China, from Korea, and from Vietnam. And we also have the Satipatthana tradition, Vipassana tradition from Thailand, from Cambodia, and also meditation tradition from the Vajrayana uh, Buddhist uh, practices. Even <coughs> Mindfulness in this cross national happiness of Bhutan was presented. The last group, the contemporary application, uh, this is not something new to the IBU conferences. We have had Buddhist psychology, uh, Buddhist psychotherapy in many of our past conferences. But this is the conference where we bring uh, three aspects together to explore just mindfulness. The text, the living meditation tradition, and the modern application. The <coughs> modern or contemporary application um, <coughs> presentation come from Australia, there's a scholar from Australia, from USA, from uh, Hungary, from the Netherlands, from Chinese Taipei, and from India. They cover uh, psychotherapy, cognitive psychology, neurology, psychiatry, physiotherapy, and even chaplaincy. The two keynote speakers from Hungary and India talk about the application of mindfulness in clinical settings, uh, that is, in hospitals in their own country, uh, based on their own research. This show how widely available mindfulness practice has been, even in um, non-Buddhist countries, such as in Central Europe, in Hungary. Very encouraging application of mindfulness for cancer patients, 
and patients with chronic physical and emotional pain in those uh, clinical environment were <coughs> uh, discussed and, and <coughs> explored. It's acknowledged that you know, one contemporary mindfulness is being used in secular context all day um, because all their courses are only eight weeks long and they are only the beginning in the long and profound journey of the mindfulness management practices. So, why some of the uh, scholars, you know, um, <coughs> Um, present a reservation. Uh, everybody agreed that you know the contemporary application of mindfulness has been very helpful uh, to many people uh, in reducing stress and pain, and also in enhancing the welfare and well-being. Of course, um, not every practitioner. <coughs> of contemporary mindfulness put the practices in the frame of the Four Noble Truths, but the spirit may be there. Um, <coughs> my, my own experience is that is at Oxford, when uh, Professor Mark William uh, started the Oxford Center for Mindfulness, we discussed about this. I, I had the privilege of being the first founding trustee of the center. Uh, he said, um, in order to popularize and make it more accessible to as many people as possible, um, they have to present mindfulness in a secular context without, whenever possible, referring to uh, Buddhism and Buddhist, Buddhist sources. <coughs> And he said, that's not, that's not being dishonest. But the good intention is you know, to, to make it um, acceptable to as many people as possible. But one thing that, one, thing, one interesting that he, he told me was that, okay, one of their famous books, Mindfulness-Based Cognitive Therapy for Depression, that they co-wrote, you know, four, four scholars co-wrote co -wrote the book. He said they didn't want to use the word mindfulness. Instead, they wanted to use other words, you know, to describe. Each time they came up with a new title for the book, the in-house uh, the in-house editor, you know, would uh, um, reject it. Ultimately, when he said then maybe we should come back to the word mindfulness. The, uh, the in-house in editor just said, yes. So he said, it's not possible to get away from the word mindfulness. Although it's, it's, it looks very Buddhist and, and they, I mean, many of them, they, they don't, don't want to go that, that way. But to be fair, <coughs> people like Dr. John Tiste always you know, put uh, his clinical um, psychology and, and especially you know, mindfulness practices in the context of the Four Noble Truths, especially when he talks about behavior psychology. So all those things you know were discussed in the um, <coughs> in the panel. You know, um, all the ten papers. Presented uh, in in the panel, you know, touch on many of those important issues and and research finding. Of course, we can only do you know so much in such a short time. Text we can um, we can have more paper instead of the six paper that that we presented, and on. Contemplate on the, the contemporary application, thousands of books and papers have been published. And here we only have 10 papers to summarize them. About the living meditation tradition, 
we just have many of them. And here we just have examples to, to, to bring together. Nevertheless, despite the limit of our presentation during this conference, this is the intent of the IABU. It's a statement of intent that the IABU is open um, to diversity and uh, is determined to serve its um, student as well as the, the world at large uh, using all forms of you know, resources that we have in the Buddhist tradition. Thank you very much.